Do you want to have a look into what I call my fortress of solitude? You might be able to see some of it behind me. Stick around and let's have a look at an updated plant room slash conservatory tour. Hi, my name is Memo, this is my channel, Have Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today is an interesting video for two reasons. One, it's a video that I generally kind of look forward to doing because I know that I enjoy watching these types of videos when other people do them and I know a lot of you generally always ask me to have a look around the conservatory. Dread it because it can be a bit of a pain to film and edit. <laughs> I think the longest time I've ever spent editing videos tends to be like kind of conservatory tour videos. So I'm going to try something a bit different with this one and do it a bit down and dirty and maybe not do as heavy of an edit on this one. The second reason why I was kind of, it's a bit of a pain of a video is because this one has been filmed twice. It's the second time I'm filming it now because after spending all of that time filming and doing all of this a couple of days ago, I went to start editing yesterday and realized the entire video was blurry. <laughs> So hopefully second time's a charm. <laughs> but without further ado, let's have a look and I'll, I will kind of take you around uh, just to give you an idea of how I'm going to structure the video. And I know that this is something that a lot of people have requested and I will hopefully be doing it on most of my videos at the very end and take a picture without me in it of the plants that you usually see behind me in the videos and put a little label to them and it will be usually at the very end of the video. So if you're ever curious as to what things are, I know there's been a lot of people that have asked about the orangey red plant. Let me like to spin you around and you might be able to see what I'm talking about. I'm assuming they mean this one here. It is actually two plants instead of just the one. It is actually, this one is the Dark Lord, which you get the kind of ready backs on. And the orangey one, the yellowing leaf is the yellowing leaf, but the orange kind of tinted leaves that you see intermixed with that, very similar leaf shape, but that is the philodendron painted lady. So it's two different plants, but they do look quite nice together. And considering that most people like it, I might just leave it as is, but yes, it's two separate plants. But yeah, I'll do that at the end of all of my videos. And for this video, I will take a picture of the kind of area that I'm talking about because I might not go into every single plant but I will take a picture I'll put it in a cut screen between the shots basically and I'll hopefully label as much as possible rather than me having to tell you this is this plant this is this plant this is this plant and you can see it from that screen. After that very long intro let's have a look shall we? Okay so Starting off at the first shelf and I'll pan you around and you might be able to see down there You can see the fan. It hasn't got the The mist going, but I can show you actually let me pan the camera down and Hopefully that will stay there and let me show you what it looks like when I switch it on So give it a minute can you see the mist? Super cool. You get a fan and a humidifier technically at the same time. So that's quite cool. I will switch it off now because it's already quite humid in here. But I thought because I know some people asked about this, I'll see if I can find this, the Amazon link for this and link it down below in the video as well. But yeah, let's look at the first plant shelf. And let me see if I can move around so I'm not hiding everything. Hopefully you can see both me and the plants. But this is what I've called in previous videos my epipremnum corner because there's a lot of my epipremnums on here, even one that is classed as an epipremnum but isn't. And so you can see here the, uh, the Helenii, Bar Helenii. Oh, still love this plant. It's still doing exceptionally well. I have to say, 
out of all of the plants that I have ever bought from Equigenera, this one has not skipped a beat and it has grown consistently and medium speed for this one. But I will be doing a, a review on this one in a year's time. I know people have been waiting for some of these things. If you want earlier feedback on some of these plants and you want me to do it at six month stages, let me know and I can do that as well. But you can see behind my painted, not painted lady, painted lady I was just talking about. This is my marble queen and it's kind of slightly starting to attach to the wall as well. But uh, down below, you might be able to see it peeking. If I just tilt it down, there you go. You can kind of see the Pothos Enjoy. I've got my Shangri-La there. Right behind it is what I was talking about, mislabeled as Epipremnum, because that one is usually, here at least, it is labeled as an Epipremnum marble planet, but that is a Monstera Spa Peru. There's a uh, Mandula Pothos, in the back there, there's another uh, uh, Enjoy, because my Enjoy, what I've tend to find with my Enjoy is that it will do really well for like nine months and then all of a sudden it will throw a hissy fit, maybe have a bit of rot, and then usually what I do is I'll try to salvage everything. So I'll basically take everything out of the pond, put it in the water, the roots will reestablish itself, I'll take some propagation. So I've ended up with one very small Pothos Enjoy. I've now got six different plants, I think, of Enjoy around basically. So. Mm. And if I tilt you further down as well, you might be able to see right there at the bottom, I've got a Pipremnum Pinatum, and I've got the Burley Marks Reverted Variegated at the very corner that I was kind of testing out with the soil. And I don't know if you might be able to see right at the bottom there, there is my Golden Pothos. And you can see how little light it is getting right down at that corner. And I think what else you might need to see over here. Oh, 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 oh. This is, and I can never remember what the anthurium is. It's the anthurium with all the corrugated leaves. And you might be able to see it there, yeah. And then there's the newest leaf there. You can see some of the orchids at the top, but I'll talk about the mounts in just a moment. <laughs> it's not one of my recent videos if I don't like show this, but. <laughs> Look, it is still alive, the Anthurium cuticuensis. Mm, it is still alive. This is the first leaf that has come in through it being in my care entirely. This was coming out as it was arriving, but there is a sphagnum moss collar and it's surviving. I still don't know if it's going to die. I'm assuming it might, but I am enjoying it whilst it lasts. I would like it if this plant started to get bigger leaves soon. If anybody, because I know a few of you have got this, has anybody tried this on a moss pole? Because it seems like it would kind of enjoy a moss pole and I wonder whether or not the leaves would start to get a bit big, bigger because this is really getting quite tall quite quickly. But so far, so good. And then right behind there, I don't know whether or not you might be able to see it, right there, kind of where my finger is there, there is the Philodendron agigus, and that one's doing quite well. I'm kind of letting it attach to the wall. It's doing okay. So let's pan around. Yeah, this is the big mama jama shelf now. So let's start <laughs> talking through the mess that is this. Should we go from the bottom basically? So right at the bottom, and you, you might, not be able to see it because all the leaves are hiding it. Let's move lower down. This is a new angle for everybody, me and myself included. So there we go. If I just move this out of the way, you can see a uh, Philodendron Splendid propagation there. I've got, this is a Scindapsus Cloud something. I'll see if I can add it at the top there. Monstera Dubai right at the bottom. There's <laughs> An alocasia poly that is trying to survive. If I move it out, you might be able to see right there. And then, oh, I am enjoying this plant a lot more than I thought I was going to. This is the Philodendron Snowdrift. It's still very, very small, but it's doing okay. And if I tilt you around ever so slightly and I move some of the leaves 
from these Meryl Dents, you might be able to see, I think that's a Pelionia Repent, which I've kind of really enjoyed growing, if I'm being completely honest. Now, uh, one of the other things that you might be able to see, if I tilt you down ever so slightly, again, my place is messy, but we've had this discussion already. That is one of my propagates for a top cutting that I took from the Ismail Dents, and this is one of the propagates leaves, and you can see quite how large it is. Let me put my head next to it so you can kind of tell that's how large that one is. And that's how small the pot is for the mother plant, which is everything above it, basically. So whilst I've got you at this random angle, let me see if I can kind of move a few things around and tilt you around. There we go. So here we've got propagation that I've kind of attached to the shelf in terms of the, the support poles, I guess. And this is the Philodendron Splendid. This is the very bottom of the Anthurium Esmeral Dense. This is the Lutherii, and it's an interesting one, the way that it's growing. I am enjoying how it's growing. It's also popping out inflorescences like crazy. This is a very tall Anthurium, so I will talk about that some point soon in a future video. Um, and right behind, if I bring you up a bit closer, you might be able to see You've got this, the Anthurium arrow there. There is a propagation of the Dark Lord. There is also the Amidrium medium, and there is the Brantianum there. So I brought you back up again now, and let's see what's happening up at the top on this shelf. So, I mean, look at this leaf. It's almost competing. So Philodendron is Meryl Dense, Anthurium is Meryl Dense. <laughs> Very cool. I don't think the Anthurium is Meryl Dense leaves, I don't think, will ever get quite as large as some of my largest Philodendron is Meryl Dense. This is the newest leaf and it's still hardening off. And it's the one directly after this, after I did a cut. So it probably will get a lot larger still. So that's good. There is right back there, you can see it there. That is the Begonia melanobulata. So I might bring you up and show you this a bit closer because it is quite impressive. So let's have a look. Can you see the beauty that is that? And right next to it, which you can see here that's kind of growing on a bit of a moss pole, that is the Raphidophora hongongensis. And it is growing wild. You might be able to see that is coming off the top of it as well. It's dropped down the bottom of the shelf. I got that plant from Grow Tropicals. And I didn't know very much about it, but I thought it was interesting. I mean, the leaves aren't anything to write home about. They're kind of relatively plain green leaves. They're very leathery. They're very thick. And I assumed it would be a slow grower like a weed. This almost goes uh, grows as quickly in my care as most of my pothos, if not faster. So don't be sleeping on the Raphidophora, Raphidophora I think? Yeah, I think it's Raphidophora hongongensis. I'll add the name somewhere as well. Very, very cool. I'm assuming it's because it was probably discovered in Hong Kong or somewhere around that vicinity, or it might be quite common there, basically. But yes, yeah, so that's another one that I thought was quite interesting. My very, very sad, and I'll bring you in so you can see the patheticness that is the original Monstera Oblica Peru that you might be able to see in the background there. So that leaf there and everything else. It's not a lot left, but you can see the runners that are going everywhere. Right next to it is let me see if I can actually get it in. Right next to it, you might be able to see there, that is the Anthurium Metallicum, finally. So that was a trade that I did recently with a lovely one of you people out there. Hi, I hope you enjoy yours. Um, and above, let me see if I can tilt up. That's what I said, down and dirty with this one. 
is the Philodendron Esmeralda spirit. And you might be able to see there's a lot of sun stress that's happened on this plant because it gets a lot of light and did during this period of time, basically. And But that's the most mature leaf when it came with me. There was another one that kind of tried a bit. Let me see if I can bring that one down because I know that a lot of people liked that one when I kind of unboxed it. So I'm gonna bring it down for a bit of a closer inspection. So you can kind of see reddish leaves. This has happened, they're not necessarily kind of yellowing off. This one is kind of on its way out, but this leaf is doing quite well. It's quite dark, it's got like a dark cast. This one's still quite bright and there is a new leaf that is emerging there. I decided to give it a bit of a moss pole and I'll look at that rootage that is happening there and it's going down into the soil, but I'm not too worried about it potentially having any form of root rot because I've kind of left it in a clear pot and the roots seem super happy. I'm kind of dealing with this the same way that I would with my Esmeral Dense and I'm letting it be a bit pot bound because I found that the Esmeral Dense pops out bigger leaves that way anyway. So this is doing quite well. So let me put that back up. And you might be able to see it right there at the very, very tippy top. Can you see those weird shaped leaves? This is my Philodendron UPI. Very cool plant, but it's wide. So I thought I'd put it at the top because I've got more space up there for it to be wide. Right next to it is a story of kind of propagation success, especially as it wasn't doing quite so well. That is an Alocasia sinuata, I think. It's the one that's got kind of almost a bit like dragon scale leaves. And this one for me grows easier than my actual dragon scale. And right there, you might be able to see, this was a chop and prop that I did from my Philodendron Florida Ghost. And it's kind of looking a bit kind of minty or very light green leaves at the moment. It did have some white ones. It doesn't get as white leaves as I would necessarily like it to get, but it is predominantly because it's not getting as much light as it possibly could because of what I've done with the greenhouse paint that you might be able to see on the top panels of the conservatory. But at the same time, that one would be happy and it would get white leaves. Everything else in here would burn to a crisp. So I'm okay with it having slightly duller leaves. It's okay, but it grows like a weed and like, I don't even have that on my plant care reminder. It's one of the few plants that I'm just like, I look at the indicator on the self-watering pot with pond that I've got it in and just go, is it dry? Ah, fill it up a bit more. How long it's been dry for? I don't know. So, mm. but it's been going like that for the last three years. So something, it's happy about something or another, basically. All right, let's have a look at some other plants on this side. Heterocraspidum, oh my God. Still love this plant. Never thought I was gonna love this plant as much as I do, but hot. Oh. So let me talk you through something that you might be able to see here. I'm not gonna move it too, too much, but that is my Melanochrysum that is also kind of growing towards the other shelf. It is getting bigger. I will give dibs, and I cannot remember now who made the comment on my plant roast video <laughs> that I should have included the Melanochrysum. Yes, I might do a second one of those videos because I think everybody quite enjoyed that. I think I did as well, got things off my chest. But I <laughs> made a really good comment about something is not working with the Melanochrysum, so we, no, it's a Melanochrysis, and I'm just like, anybody who has grown a Melanochrysum can uh, <laughs> probably relate. That love it, Milano crisis. <laughs> you should trademark that. That is a great saying. So that one's doing okay. It struggled a bit when it first moved into this new space with getting like higher light levels. It's growing like a weed. I really do need to air layer with it and cut it back because it's getting a bit scraggly at the moment. But you can tell how much I don't really care for a plant that much because I'm not going out of my way to give it its best life. I'm just like, ah, oh, no. be feral. It's Fine, I don't care. But plants that I do care about do get special treatment. So 
for heterocraspidin. I know this is not for everybody and I know there's not that many people that are looking for this plant, but considering how much I had to go through to get this one to be happy, and this one does have air layering, so I don't know what's happening with this one in terms of the air layering, that's a new leaf coming in, it can be quite slow growing. When I say I don't know what's happening with the air layering with this one is, I've got it in soil, but I'm pretty sure all the roots were rotted. So some of the leaves were starting to soften up and it looked like it was going to die, but it did have some decent aerial roots. I put it into kind of what would be air layering with the concept of trying to get some moisture into the plants as long as the, because the, air, the regular roots were kind of dying off. The intention was never to necessarily cut it off, but to give it a bit of a boost so these roots could kind of root out. I don't think the soil ones have actually done very much, so I might actually have to take a cutting. But to be fair, I'm letting it get a few more leaves and then it'll be fine, because I can see a lot of the roots in here are looking very, very healthy at the moment. So that is doing quite, quite well. Let me show you, however, the plant that originally was purchased which meant that I had to do a second purchase because that one was not doing very well and I'd managed to get loads of cuttings for that one after it already started to get root rot because the roots were already destroyed on that one. And I tried to propagate multiple sections of it. I think only two took. So. <laughs> Pathetic. You can see some of the original leaves that are still on there, that one. This one was a top cutting, which was a fresh leaf that hadn't even fully unfurled. It went crispy, so I cut off some of that as well, but it still managed to push out some leaves. It is in semi-hydro, I'm not entirely sure it's loving life, but it is pushing out new leaves. They're tiny, and this will take a while to ever get to the level of this one here, but I'm all right with it. I'm, I'm kind of okay with having both, basically. So let me put this back down. And you can see quite how much of the space that large as Merrill Dense, Philodendron as Merrill Dense is taking. You might be able to see right there behind that I'm trying to lift it up and see if I can. Can you see there? That is my Billy Etier. Oh, still loving this plant, definitely getting the orange petioles that you might be able to see right there. Oh. So beautiful. Um, but I am going to let it go for now in terms of like putting it down because oh, that doesn't move very often. So I don't want it to get too used to being moved. You might be able to see behind the Dark Lord leaf is my Ficus Elastica Taniki. One of the last few Ficuses that I've got in my collection purely because I don't do well with Ficuses. Really don't, and I've, I've kind of acknowledged that about myself, and I'm not that fussed because I don't particularly like most ficuses at this point, so I'm okay with it. Let's move lower down like we did prior with all the interesting angles today, but it's the only way that I'm going to make these videos because otherwise it stresses me out. So you can see my little baby anthurium corner. So this one is my forgetii. This one looks like a proper forgetii leaf. This one has a tiny bit of a sinus, but you can still see that it's fused and the oldest leaf. And the fact that this had gone down to one leaf and being very small after it had loads of root rot, I am quite happy with where it's got to now. Let me put this down so you can see some of the other ones. I think this is the Anthurium crystallinum high crystal or it's not the Doriaki, I don't think. I will see if I can find the name and put it there. But this one was also struggling for a bit, but it is doing okay, doing okay. This one was a lot more easily available in most plant shops. It wasn't the cheapest thing, but it wasn't the most expensive thing either. Right behind, we've got the Velenoarum, which had a bit of a struggle, but it is doing quite nicely. It's annoying with this one because I went for the smaller size and I think I would have preferred to have gone for the bigger size on that one, because it is taking its time to kind of grow. The interesting thing with that, before I put this one back, I don't know whether or not this is gonna come up on, um... <sighs> can you see the issue with the water? It's gonna go everywhere. It wouldn't be one of my videos if it didn't flood half the space. You might be able to see it there. Can you see the really pronounced ridges? This is one of the few plants, as far as I'm aware, that we might come across in kind of the houseplant world, which has 
triangular petioles. Very cool. So that's a little bit of a random bit of information to you there. And for the people that have been here for a very long time, they'll know what I'm about to show you. This was my original VTI, and you'll see my VTI plug in just a moment in terms of the size. But this is the one that has struggled for years, but it's doing okay at the moment. And then this is one of the propagates. Oh, what's a drop? The sound of pon dropping on the ground. Anybody who does semi-hydro will know that. Uh, that's about to happen because I need to clear that up. This is one of my own crystallinum hybrid mixes. Should have labeled a lot of these a lot better because I ain't got a clue what it is mixed with, but it is doing quite well. Finally getting some slightly larger leaves because this has struggled the most. And there's two in here actually, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there's two. And final one that I'll show from down here, and I think this one may have had a bit of a struggle recently with some rot, but and I haven't brought it out in a while, so let's have a look and see how bad the situation is. So one of the leaves has gone a bit yellow on this one. The newest leaf unfortunately failed, which is a bit annoying anybody who's got. So this is a luxuriance. Isn't that pretty? But I think this is the most newest leaf, basically. And I do think, considering some of the yellowing that I'm seeing on some of the leaves here, I might need to let it dry out. But no, the roots are okay. I think this is one of those plants that I don't want to ever let it dry out too, too much, basically. But oldest leaf is going yellow. This one failed. Oh, it might not have been... It might have been because it went a bit too dry too quickly. We had that warm snap that happened in the last like week and a bit in the UK when it was just starting to get higher humidity levels in here and this was growing and it got dry, I think, for a day or two in here. So unfortunate, but it is what it is. It's fine and it grows quite nicely over there. And let me put the rest of these on again because otherwise this isn't going to happen in just a moment. Okay, so if I move you ever so slightly lower, I'm not going to move everything out of the way, but you might be able to see the Calathea mosaica here. And this is one of the two Plamani eyes that I have. This light is a random light that I got for Spike, the Crested Gecko, but it wasn't bright enough for the plants that I wanted in there at the distance that it was on the terrarium for the Crested Gecko. So I've added it here and it gives a tiny bit of supplemental lighting as much as it ever will really. And apologies that you're seeing scratches on the legs. The joys of having a puppy with puppy claws. Always fun. So let's move up and then we can see some of the other sections. Okay, moving on to the next shelf. Oh, this might also be a relatively long video. I'm, I'm kind of looking at the time now and it's already at like half an hour. So this might be an hour long video. With any luck, I will need to do minimal editing. <laughs> so yeah. Um, here is, huh. didn't think I was gonna like this plant as much as I did and how much I pooed on it to begin with. This is my, Queen and Theoria, which has currently got some mini bugs on it, which is what you saw me kind of like squish there, and I will deal with them in just a moment. But there is a brand new leaf coming through. I don't know whether or not you'll be able to see it. There. Hopefully you can see it there through my hand. I don't want to move it around because there's also a new Vitarifolium leaf because the terrifolium is here as well and growing very, very long. <gasps> and this finally got a new leaf on the Anthurium Quirimalens. Quirimalens. I love the name. Quirimalens. It's like, aha, appa. Uh, so this one is doing really, really well as well. It seems to be loving life and it's quite nice how much it's sized up in the meantime. And the plants we were talking about just a moment ago at the very beginning of the video, the two different ones. So this is the Dark Lord propagation, and I will show you the back so you can kind of see the reddening. And right behind it is the Painted Lady. And I'm trying to think what else you might want to see behind this. So behind the Chroma lens, 
And you can see some of the old leaves are looking a bit knackered and somehow that managed to get knocked. Anybody who has got Ethereum's realizes when you've got a new leaf coming through, you breathe on it the wrong way and it rips. I think I'm kind of getting more used to with the Ethereum's and I'm just like, it's if it will very, very unlikely that I'm gonna have perfectly intact leaves without any problems at all. And generally in nature, that would also be the case. But if I get one, great. If I don't, I'm not gonna stress about it too, too much. But I love this. So you might be able to see there's a reason why I moved this out of the way right behind there, which is kind of vining and growing everywhere. Hopefully you can kind of see that right there is the Monstera Silta Picana. There is a Philodendron Pedatum that you might be able to see here going up. I'm not moving it too, too much, but you can see the leaves at the very top there as I move it. And this was the original mother plant of, and let me move you around. This was the original mother plant of the Philodendron Florida Ghost, and I even have an inflorescence coming through right there. So I need to deal with that. There's another inflorescence up here. To be fair with this plant, it has been blooming for me for the last two years. So not too, too bad. I usually remove it because I want more of the foliage than I want the actual blooms. So let me put this back down. Okay, so let's move back down again. So, got you down at lower level again. And you can see the length of that Vitara folium that is coming all the way down here. This is the Dean McDowell, oh, got that brain moment there, newest leaf there. You might be able to see the, there is the little fern in the corner there, right at the back, through all of this foliage. You might be able to see that is the splendid, the original mother plant. And then here is my Amplicium, a tiny bit of that Monstera Silta Picana, and my White Princess, which I'll bring you up so you can see it a bit better. There's also the mother plant of the Dark Lord. So this is my White Princess and the mother plant of the Dark Lord is right there and you can see if I turn that leaf around that's the kind of backs of it which is stunning. There is also whilst we're here and hopefully it will come up that's the mother plant behind there of the Mandula pothos. Right down here is <laughs> the plant that triggered everybody in my roast, which is my Gloriosum, and you can see what I mean, it's taking up an awful lot of space here, but let's move into the next shelf. So many unflattering angles in this video, but you know what? I'm gonna roll with it, I'm gonna roll with it. So, right, let's move up, and we'll start from the very, very tippy top. So, going from the very top, this is my Anthurium, I think it's the Anthurium bellatus. There's a different name for it and I will add it. Right next to it is my propagation of my white princess. And eh, it's doing okay. The other plant that I never thought I was gonna like quite as much as I did. And I am thoroughly enjoying at the moment the Anthurium erismoides. Oh, these leaves. I am a fan of textured leaves, I have to say, and this is giving me very much Monstera Spa Peru vibes. Let's sew the corrugation that we were looking at before with the other large leaf Anthurium on that first shelf. This is different. And also, and I know we don't generally go for the inflorescences in our little corner of the like planty world, but this one has got an inflorescence and I left it on here to show you, it's not white, it's red. So that's quite, quite cool. This has been a joy to grow actually. It's not been particularly difficult so far, but, and it's getting some decent roots. I'm trying to see if I can show you some of the roots. Very fine roots for an anthurium, I will say, but 
absolutely 100% happy that I got this, would hands down recommend. Caveat being based on my experience. I know that this might not work out for everybody, but based on what I've experienced, it's been okay. Right. <laughs> and remember the VCI, the Anthurium VCI that I showed you a moment ago, that was my original one, which had big leaves, and then I got a little pup of an Anthurium VCI. This is the pup. This is the, one of the oldest leaves that it's yellowing off. This is the next oldest leaf. Can you see the size of that? The biggest leaf is right at the back there, and there is a new leaf emerging there as well. This is what I originally bought as the Anthurium Metallicum. There's been hot debate on this one from everybody kind of going, eh. we don't think it is. It might be a hybrid possibly, but that's why it's quite nice to have the actual Metallicum now in my care. So that is glorious. Now I'll bring you down. Yeah. Oh, one of my still one of my favorite plants. Say hello to Chewbacca 2.0. So this is the Begonia Seismorii. So let me just bring you in so you might be able to see. Can you see the fuzziness? I was, was going to start singing the Can you feel the love tonight? See? Free songs for you. So I'm in a good mood this morning. I don't know why. But let's see about going a bit lower. This is, and I'll bring it in a bit closer, this is what I thought I was buying as a Calathea White Fusion, but this was also labelled as Calathea White Magic. Whatever it is, it's growing particularly easy. So I doubt that it's the White Fusion, it might be, might be a different thing called the White Magic, but it's quite nice. Still get the same kind of vibes, so if this is actually different, highly recommend this one so far. And then let me bring you in a bit closer so you can see some of the other bits on this shelf. So you might be able to see there, and if I get that leaf out of the way, if it will stay out of the way, oh, it will. Look at that if it's folded. So Monstera Oblica Columbia. Columbia, this is my White Knight. I think it's White Fuge. Is the white wizard? Might be white wizard. I will put it on the top there, and this is a propagation of my white princess. Coming further down, this is my Anthurium crystallinum with a brand spanking new leaf. And right behind there, you can see that first one there is the reverted cutting that I had from the burly marks philodendron. That is an Epipremnum pinnatum. I don't think it's a Cebu blue. I think it's just Epipremnum pinnatum. This is my second Gloriosa. And you can see now what I mean. And some of these leaves are looking a bit busted, basically. So it's okay. A whole bunch of soils in the last shelf. But I do have a grow light that I got there for when I was doing my vegetable kind of seedling grow out. So I should really use it, but I didn't have a need for that shelf just yet in the summer months. So in the winter months, I probably will. I keep getting you on a tilted level, so I keep straightening you out. Apologies for like, I don't know. But, right, so that's one thing. Right at the back is going to be something that I'm probably going to have to get rid of soon because it is currently like infested with mealy bugs. I don't know whether or not you might be able to see it. Right through there, can we see a stem? Possibly. I'll see if I can get you in a bit closer. You will probably be able to see it through, mm, possibly there. So there is the Hoya, I can't remember now, it's a very large Hoya. Again, I'll see if I can add the, the name somewhere on here. Very large leaf Hoya, very large Hoya generally, very, very large blooms. And I do love this Hoya, but at this point it's so far gone and it's so far behind the shelf that I think it might need to go. Hopefully I've got enough to take two or three cuttings and maybe propagate them, keep that plant going whilst also dealing with the mealybugs, but it might be going fully. 
So coming into the next shelf, So this is an interesting one. Let me see if I can pan you up again. Can't even pan. Look at how high that plant is here. This one is the Paraiso Verde. I have never, ever seen a plant grow that fast, that quickly, basically. Um, that fast, that quickly? That tall, that quickly. I do need a second coffee already. It's, it's one of those mornings. And this is a midweek film as well, so... Mm. Um, probably why you're getting a bit of the, the manic frenetic energy because I know that I need to get in, get cracking with work straight after filming this. This is the Philodendron Jerry Horn that I got from Kaylee Ellen's Rescue Box and of course I've watered all of these things recently so I can't lift it up too much because it will drop everywhere. This is the Thematophyllum Sprucy Annum if I'm not mistaken. And I think this was also called the Philodendron Goldii at some point. So this struggled with a tiny bit of mealy bugs and a bit of yellowing when I was trying to transition it over to semi-hydro, but I stuck with it and it's doing quite well. This is going to be a beautiful plant. So if I put this down right there so I can actually show you a bit more of what's going on behind. This is the Anthurium Eminence, I think. And that's the one that has the kind of umbrella shaped leaves. You might be able to see, let me see if I can pick you up and show you. You might be able to see through there what I mean by the kind of umbrella shaped leaves. Right next to it is the anthurium that I got because it reminded me a bit of the arrow because it, apparently in the photos it had like cup shaped leaves that were happening, but it doesn't seem to be kipping it but it is getting very much T-shaped leaves. So kind of similar to the Tesla plant or the Philodendron Holtonianum. So, and it's interesting because I got the Philodendron Pelora ens, and you'll see in a minute, wanting the Holtonianum, but they didn't have it. Then I found the Holtonianum, added that in, and now I've got the Anthurium. So I've got a lot of plants that do the letter T on them. So I'm okay with it. I'm enjoying it for now. And then right next to it, here you can see, the little rescue philodendron, not philodendron, Anthurium forgetii, again from the Kaylee Ellen and the Rare Plant Shop rescue boxes. And right behind there is now a very, very happy and very, very large. I'll see if I can get it off without everything dropping down. Oh, it's trying to, trying to water and trying to move all of these things. So this is the Paraiso Verde, and before you ask, I'm still not getting much variegation on the leaves. Everybody was saying it's to do with the heat. This was coming out during the warmest days of the year, and it's got a tiny bit. I'm underwhelmed massively by this plant. Thoroughly impressed by how quick it grows, but massively underwhelmed with what it needs to give me, and it's not. However, and I can understand why people would choose the plant that I'm going to show you now instead of that one, because it's similar vibes in terms of what it's supposed to be giving. The Jose Bueno. Much, much larger. And I know I did a review on this, and I'll see if I can link it at the top there. And people were just like, no, 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 give it a chance and give it time. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I will eat humble pie. And this is me eating humble pie saying, I now love this plant. I get what you were all talking about. It just needed a beat. I don't want to say a beat. It took two years with me, but I think it was just struggling to root out. But after it did, watch out. So let me put this back. So that's that top shelf there. Let me move things around and just get everything organized. I'm hoping you're all liking those, like these new little pots basically, the cash pose, because some of these are kind of interesting colors and everything, but they worked really well for me. And these are all from North's shop, and again I'll link it down below. Amazing, amazing, amazing designs. So let me put this back up as well. Can you see why I can't do like isolation? I ain't got enough space to do isolation. And yes, if I do get pests in here, it's it's difficult to manage it. I, I, they go everywhere. I get it. This is not for everybody. I know this would probably keep a lot of people up at night, but I don't have a choice. I've got too many things in here and 
somehow they're all doing okay, it's fine. It's okay. So let's move on to some of the lower shelves now on the same one. Now hopefully that will stay down. Oh, it'll do something. So this was the Philodendron Sordoroi Affinity and it had died down to a stump. I tried to kind of get it happy for a long period of time. Put it in a propagation box and every <laughs> single node on that stem activated and I'm kind of growing it a bit like crawler at the moment and it's doing nice. I'm enjoying it. It's looking very Peperomia-esque without the dramas of Peperomia is giving me. It's okay. At some point this is going to start climbing. I think it already is starting to kind of go up but enjoying it now and you can barely see any of that silveriness on the leaves but it is there I do promise. I will say out of a lot of the plants this is underwhelming for me in terms of licks but now that it's doing okay, I'm kind of okay. I'm here for it. I'm okay with it. And then right next to it is my Monstera Pina Partita. And I traded, I can't remember who I traded for a small rooted cutting of this. The very first London plant swap event, so not another, or yeah, not another plant swap or another plant swap. Oh. Um, I'll see if I can link. So it's the one that Emma and Lisa run together basically. So I will link it down below. But if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably already seen me post about it on my stories. Great, great fun. And I know they've started doing ones in different parts of the UK now. If you didn't know, now you know. But this one was really, really cool. It took a while to get going. And I think that's true for how juvenile the Pinapetita that I was getting was. But it's now starting to do things and I'm enjoying it. It's very similar to the Monstera but Peru in terms of texture. Can you see trends here in terms of the textures that I like on terms of leaves? But this is the one, if I'm not mistaken, I think Kaylee Ellen might have had a very large one of these. And it's the one that might not be for the faint of heart because on the stem it tends to grow leaves on either side. So it can kind of look a bit like the body of a spider or a crab. So it might be a bit freaky for everybody. I cannot wait for it to get that level. I'm looking forward to that. There were a few of these that came on the market recently at least here in the UK, and I've seen them in a couple of plant stores that weren't that expensive, but they'd kind of let it vine quite heavily and it was kind of losing a lot of it at that point when it was vining as much as it was. And it was like, it's too similar at this stage to the Monstera Spur Peru. And I've got that, that's fine, that's a vining one. I wanted the structure that this one provides and it's doing really well. And I can't remember who I traded with this. If you do watch this video, thank you. It's growing really, really well. And then this is a plant that I don't ever very rarely or very rarely do I ever talk about this one. This is a begonia, it's a begonia rex and I don't even know what the name of it. I think it's silver something or glass something and I don't know whether or not that silvery iridescence which covers the entire leaf is coming through. The, the patterning that you're getting is actually coming from the underside of the leaves which is really really cool. And this is something that I bought for the bio orb terrarium when I had the two dart frogs in it and the dart frogs unfortunately are no longer with us they they got some form of a disease which I could not sort out if that makes sense so RIP little froggies but yeah this one was something that was in there and when I was trying to empty it out I decided I was going to keep it and this was two leaves and this poor thing it is on the plant care app but it's on the plant care app as begonia propagation which was for a propagation and the image on it was for a propagation of a begonia that I did five years ago and it's kind of stayed on there because it's, it was getting watered with a couple of other propagation propagated begonias most of those have got their own listing now on my plant care app this one still hasn't got one but it's doing well it's growing in a weird way but it's fine I do really like the look of this I really really like the look of this very very unusual leaves And I'll see with things that I can kind of move out. There's one thing that's kind of attached to the actual structure, so I'm not going to move it out. This, you might be able to see a leaf there. That is another propagation of my Philodendron Glorious. This, however, I'll show you the back, and so that might make a bit more sense, is the Philodendron Rubri Juvenile. And this 
or the El Choco Red for some people that, that might recognize the original name that we all kind of got used to it, is doing really, really well. And you can see there's a new leaf coming through and I'm really excited about that because this is the one that kind of pretty much gone down to its final leaf. And you can always see me kind of taking off leaf sheaths because if I don't do it now, I'll forget and it will never happen. But um, this one has gone down to its final leaf, put it in a propagation box, bounced back really nicely. It is now living its best life in Pon. And yeah, it's doing really, really, really well. And we'll do a quick tour of the lower shelves because there's not much that I can show you in detail with those ones, but let's have a look. So there's another grow light there. There's a propagation box that is a mess. And then right down at the bottom, let me see if I can kind of get this in a way that is gonna be easier to show you whilst I knock the camera around, is a whole host of water propagations and the yellow fusion calathea there, which is going quite well. It's actually not crisping up. It's probably just got the right levels of light. Ah, oh, the pink princess, there's just the caca princess at this point. Some cuttings of my original Burley Marks variegata, and you'll see that in just a moment, some of the bigger ones, more, Enjoy more pink princess. I don't know why I don't just get rid of them because they're all caca colored. But I'll show you kind of where we stand it. There's a lot of crispy leaves that are that I need to deal with is, and that one was that's a senesio, which is kind of almost like a wax ivy. And I got that as a plant cutting trade with Jane Perone, which is great. It's doing quite well. Don't look at it too, too much. It, it threw a bit of a hissy fit and kind of browned off half of its leaves. When I moved it first into this conservatory, I need to deal with them, but it's still doing quite well. Right behind that, right there, you might be able to see a bit of a pot. That is another propagation of the Splendid. Here is my, um, my more variegated Monstera Albo, and you can see it there, it's growing at the back there. And I think that's everything on here. Let's move on to the next shelf. Right, this is gonna be an interesting one to show again. So let's see, let's start with this one. So this was another thing that kind of died down to a stump and I put it in the propagation box to bring it back to life. And again, this is growing a bit like a crawler now because every single node activated. But this is the Philodendron Manii. And I struggled a lot with this, but now that it's a lot happier and a lot better rooted in, and you can see that's kind of what happened with the foliage of this plant when it came out of the prop box and it kind of hit drier air than the 100% humidity that it was getting in the prop box, but it's done all right. And yeah, really, really, really happy with this now. Wasn't with it when it was dying off a death, basically, but you know. Then we've got my ficus, second ficus that you're gonna see today, Shiviriana, or moonshine, moonlight. So this is a variegated ficus elastica, basically. Really, really happy with this, and people that were telling me that it does grow relatively fast, it's, it's done well, actually, yeah. This has done really, really well. So that's getting there because it gets like a lot of light. Right behind there, you might be able to see what I'm shaking now. That, unfortunately, is my very large Hoya Sunrise, which I loved, and I loved the blooms and all these things. So this year, all of its roots rotted, unfortunately. So it is currently the entire thing is in a water propagation and it's getting roots slowly. So it's not fully died off. And some of these leaves are plumping up, but it's not dropping its leaves and they haven't gone fully dry. So I'm still hopeful that maybe with enough time that might do a comeback. This is one that surprised me because I thought the roots had kind of fully rotted. And this is the Rubri Synctum Platinum Philodendron because these were the two original leaves that came up and they were a bit crispy. That's the original one that's kind of yellowing off. I didn't, ha didn't think it had great roots to begin with. You might be able to see how many roots it has grown since, but now that it's got its first leaf, oh, it's shiny and it's rough lit and it's sexy. I like this. I really, really like this more so than I thought it was going to. And thanks to the people that responded, because I was asking, I wasn't too sure if this was a crawler or a climber and people were just like, no, it's a climber. 
and I, can, I think I can see what you mean now. And yes, it very much is a climber, I think. Um, let's move this big. Um, oh, my Patriciae that I was so worried about with my Equigenera Hall because this one was the one that came and it was really cold and it had some damage. So I think this was the first leaf in my care, which is not bad considering. This is the newest leaf. Oh, this is the newest leaf and it's still hardening off, so I don't want to touch it too, too much. But the person that I traded with recently, I'll show you there, is absolutely huge goals. Same thing goes, Tanya, if you watch this, goals with your one as well. Eventually it will get there. And so let me put this one down and get some of the other plants that are there as well. So the next one, which has been growing consistently since I got it, and I wasn't expecting me to be as impressed as I am with this plant, but this is the Philodendron Sharonii. Newest leaf, it has not skipped a beat. It is growing in semi-hydro quite happily, so the Philodendron Sharonii. And it's, I mean, the leaves aren't getting much bigger, but I'm not really giving it much of a moss pole, but I'm all right with the leaves as they are. They're really, really cool. Now, and this, <laughs> people that have been here for a while will know, and I'm just like, I've got a surprise plant that you might have not seen before. And only because I saw it in a local plant store and it was in the reduced bin for like under five Great British Pounds. And I remember the point where these ones used to be expensive. I know they dropped quite quickly, but this is the Syngonium Red Spot, I think. It's a bit faded and everything, and it's growing quite nicely, but I thought, you know what, for that kind of price, it's a Syngonium, nothing's gonna go wrong with it really, so be fine. I need to get rid of some of this old leaves, but that's that. Let me put some of these plants back up, and then we can uh, carry on. Da -da. Okay, moving further down on the shelf, mm. I'll see how I'm going to do this. Ah, oh, much better. You can kind of see, first and foremost, my skeleton key epipremnum. Absolutely stinking amazing. I'm so glad that I finally managed to find a mature form of it and grab it. Have not regretted this purchase in the slightest. So let's have a look at the next shelf. Spiritus Sancti, doing okay. Newest leaf is a bit on the small side, but it's doing okay. I think this was getting a bit too much light, so I moved it to a place where it should be getting a bit less light to see if that makes a difference. But so far, so good. It's a consistent grower, but it's a slow plant, I'm not gonna lie. And then because with the Philodendron Glorious, which I really, really wanted to get big leaves, I've always struggled to get them there. I do have one that I traded again with one of you lovely, lovely peeps. So Philodendron Splendid, this was a rooted cutting with the newest leaf coming through. So yeah, this one's doing quite, quite nicely. Then we've got, I can never remember the name of this one. This one. This is another hybrid, and I think this is a hybrid with the Mamei and the Varicosum. I'll see if I can add the name at the top there, but this is another rooted cutting from the same trade, trade purchase that I did with the Splendid, basically. So the Splendid was a purchase, it wasn't a trade. And then actually, this is one of the good things about this video having to be redone because I didn't have this plant when I did the original filming of this. <sighs> Hold on, because this, this was like, that's what I'm saying, put your wish lists out there. This was the original reason for the trade where the metallicum came through as well. But, yeah, let's see if I can lift. Anthurium, Nigrolaminum, GG. That didn't take very long at all. Very, very, very cool. And again, you know who you are, thanks to the trade. This is amazing. Um, and moving on to 
the second Monstera oblique Peru that is growing in soil instead of semi-hydro like the other one is. And can anybody say runners? Runner, runner, runner. So, yeah, underwhelming, I have to say. Not the plant itself. I'd love it if the plant kind of bushed out a lot more than it did and it didn't send quite as many runners out. I would like it. But so far in my care, I've not been able to crack it just yet. And then, and this is going to be a video that I'm going to do soon as a review. This is the Anthurium Microsp. Adix. And you might be able to see I've left it on here. It's kind of dying one. That is how tiny the leaf, the leaf, the bloom is. And there's two plants in here. And great story with this was I went to the rare plant event up in Leeds where Jacob and the, and the team from Grow Tropicals were there. And I was talking to Jacob and I'm just like, any ones that you suggest? And he's just like, pick this one up. Trust me, trust me, trust me. So glad I did. Really did not think if you like kind of the strapier foliage. This has got some texture in it, but you don't want anything that gets absolutely huge because you might be limited on space. This is great because this won't get huge. It hasn't. This is nearly a year and a half old now. So really, really, really cool plant. And then cannot believe how fast this is growing. And Ethereum, Syngonium, Chia pence, or chia pensi. Oh, the uh, people that have like a thing for like textures and feelings. This isn't textured, but the feeling on this is unlike anything I can kind of say. Something between suede and rubber. It's really, really quite cool. So, really glad I got this actually. And then right behind, which is the one that everybody laughs at me at, and I don't know whether or not I'm going to be able to kind of lift it. So, you might be able to see it's the Aurea. Monstera adansonia variegated. Is it still growing like utter rubbish? Yes. Am I still unimpressed with it? Also yes. Am I still keeping it though? Also yes, basically. So yeah. I'm very bad at getting rid of plants, even the ones that don't bring me joy. So but we shall see. Let me bring you down a bit lower again. So you might be able to see on the lower shelf there, Pink Princess. That was a propagation from a while back from a friend. That is propagation of White Princess. Loads of Anthurium seedlings there. Philodendron Atapaboense, which was from the rescue box, Michaeli Ellen. And then right there, is the Burley Marks variegata cuttings that are variegated and they're now pointed in. So this will hopefully be my next new big tree. Okay, moving over to some of the other plant shelves now. Uh, let's see if I can kind of get you there. So my other Monstera Albo variegata, very, very little variegation. I'll see if I can, do you know what I mean? It's like, Eklin. Then we've got the, and hopefully you'll be able to see the leaf shape there. That is the Peloriense. Some of the newest leaves are more Tesla-esque, so you can see it from that one there. There is a splendid propagation there. There is at the very, very top there, and I'm trying to air layer it there, is the Philodendron Tenue right behind it, and I don't know whether or not you're going to be able to see it. Let me see if I can move you in a bit closer. So right here, I don't know. So that is another Pelora ends, but this, ooh, this leaf here, can you see that leaf that's shaking? That is a Heltonianum. That's how far back it is. And then let me show you some of the others. So many unflattering angles. Anthurium pedatum. Absolutely amazing. People that have been here for a while will know that I wasn't going for the pedatum. I was actually going for the pedata radiatum, but I did not get the name correct. Ended up with this. Based on what some people have said about the pedata radiatum being a bit tricky, this has been an anthurium that is just set it and forget it basically it's done really really well it's very tall 
but it's done really, really well. Now, if I take you down a bit lower and show you the lower shelves here, so you might be able to see there. Yeah, there we go. So this is the size of my mother plant and the crystallinum side of things. Right behind it, hopefully you might be able to see if I move some of this around. There we go. That is the Piper crocatum, which is kind of vining absolutely everywhere. You can see it there. Piper sylvaticum. Anybody who's Greek will know that I've got the evil eye here as well. And that is everything on this plant shelf with the exception of maybe the original gigas that I had there. And right next to it is the Amedrium medium. So let's move on to what I think is the final plant shelf. So, starting from the very tippy top, that is the Caladium springfling right behind it. And I will show you what I meant because I've actually got a new leaf and for the people that thought I might have been a bit too cruel on my plant roast video, let me show you what I meant. Because the Linamii has got a new leaf. New leaf of a Linamii. And I know it's starting to harden off slowly, but this is not the pink we were promised. I would have been so raw if I'd prayed some of these initial prices for the Linamii. Underwhelming for me doesn't cut it, basically. It... And I know somebody was mentioning like that they were looking for it and if I wanted to trade. It is underwhelming, but I want to keep it for a bit longer and just give it a bit of a chance to see how it grows. Ask me again if you're still looking in about a year's time and then we'll see how it goes, basically. But yeah, still hasn't changed my opinion on this plant. So let's move that back to where it was. There we go. Then there is my poor little begonia bravurimosa subspecies exotica that was like a tree, had a bit of a fall, and it's kind of is where it is at the moment. I'm okay with it being a bit smaller because that was getting a bit over the top basically towards the end. I've also got a whole propagation box full of that basically that... Um, this is the patheticness that is <laughs> my... green alocasia dragon scale. I don't know, oh, I think my silver one died off at some point, or I think I might have gifted it to somebody else. Um, there is the propagation of the Miscalitiana, you might not be able to see, but it is there, and the alocasia jacqueline at the top there. And let me bring you in with me. Let's see if I can get you all a bit lower so you can see this shelf here. So there is another Syngonium, Syngonium? Philodendron Splendid Propagation, loads of those. This is, and you can see the foliage, AMG, AMG. This one is the Frederick Stalii Anthurium. And if I was to choose between this one and the Lutherii, the Frederick Stalii would win for me, hands down. Then we've got the Monstera Esqueleto. This was a new purchase as well, just because I've got no self-control. And I can kind of see what Kaylee Ellen meant about this plant. This is the Syngonium Strawberry Ice, I think it's called. And you can kind of see the ice, but I get what she means now. I wouldn't have wanted to pay the prices that a lot of people were paying for this a while back. No shade on them, but not for me. It's okay at the lower price that I found it. There is an Epipremnum Penatum Variegata there. Next to it is a Subhastatum. Next to that is, you can see it there, is the Begonia Antheoxus. Here is the Anthurium cupulis spathum that is bouncing back. There is a Cebu blue there that I'm kind of letting connect to the wall. You can see it. There is also, this is the Philodendron scandens. 
I found the other day as well and got the mint adansonia. Not that I wanted it, but it was relatively cheap. Anthurium pendants here. There is the fuzzy, and I can never remember the Havarthia peperomia, I think that's right there. There was another one further down as well. There was a new generation of Pink Princess, so I am trialing my luck to see if I can actually get it to remain pink, because this one had a lot more variegation on it. And then we've got my other much larger Plamanii there, and right in between all of this is a Syngonium Albo as well. So, calming in lower, yeah, Syngonium corner basically. So. I can never remember this one. This is the Lano, Lano something. No, it's not the Lano Carty Road. I can never remember this. I'll see if I can put it on the screen. Behind it is a Syngonium red spot, I think, or strawberry milkshake or something like that. And this was a, a small rooted cutting. This was the original leaf down here. And it's taken a while, but it's actually producing some quite interesting foliage. The soil test, the most recent one, is right there at the back as well. This is the Syngonium Maria, if I'm not mistaken. There is an Anglionema back there as well. This is the original Chewbacca, which is looking a bit worse for wear at the moment, but it's still doing okay. So the Begonia Sizemorii. Calathea Beauty Star, I think. One of the last few Calatheas that I've got in my care. And this was another trade from one of the other events, the Calathea Warsaw Whiskey Eye, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the last shelf, but let's have a look at the wall behind me. So let me see if I can kind of tilt you up and you might be able to see. Yes, that's actually a lot better than I thought it would be. So Right in the corner there, and I'll see if I can point to it. Oh, I've got a handy pointing stick. This here is, and hopefully you can see what I'm pointing at, that is the Dracula Solei orchid. And that is the one that's like the monkey faces. Right next to it is the Platycerium Superbum, 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 uh, which is growing spectacularly. Then next to it is a Brassavolan Dosa, the second one that I bought, which is already in bloom. <laughs> the other one that I got that was like a hybrid of it took me four years to get it to bloom, mainly because I couldn't get it right. But again, North Spain little kind of mounts basically do wonders for a lot of my orchids. Next to it is a Barbophyllum Elizabeth, Buckleberry Elizabeth Anne. That's the one that has those kind of pod-like flowers. Haven't had it for bloom yet, but hopefully one day, which looks a bit like kind of alien pods. Next to it is my original hybrid of the Brassavel and Dosa, and that is the Susan Fuchs. Here is the Maxillaria tanifolia, and that is the coconut pie orchid. If you ever find that in a plant store, it's usually in bloom when you'll find it as well. It's not the cheapest thing, so it might be 30 or 40 quid. If you like the scent of coconut, go and smell the orchid. Thank me later when you've got it home and you've obviously purchased it. Un Believable. The blooms aren't that exciting, kind of very phalaenopsis esque, but the scent, especially first thing in the morning, and it does really smell. It doesn't just smell of coconut, I find, it smells of coconut pie. So you get the scent of coconut and the slight scent of pastry. It's so bizarre, but it's so amazing. Right, moving on to this side. So you might be able to see, I finally got myself, so I want one. Uh, Spanish moss there. Behind it there is a Rincavola orchid, so it's kind of a hybrid of the Brassavola. Right next to it is... Why can I never remember it? I want to say Oncidium, but I don't think it is the big one there. I'll 
trying to find the name and put it at the top there. Loads of people did say that that should really be in a pot rather than a mount. I have heard you, I'm trying to find space for it. Problematic. Obviously the people that have been here for a while will know the Nepenthes. Some of them are older pictures that I've kind of left on there. They haven't really caused much of an issue, but it just makes it look a bit fuller. And then next to that still, that is an Oncidium, I think that is the Oncidium Twinkle Mona. Uh, cannot remember, that's another orchid that's scented and the orchid that's a bit more like grass. But I think that concludes the tour. That was down and dirty to the nth degree, basically. Oh, I dread to see what I'm gonna see when I start at least trying to attempt to vaguely edit this in terms of some of the close-ups of my face. But hopefully you've enjoyed my rant and my little tour around space. It's doing quite well, just as a bit of a wrap up in terms of how things are going. The the peel off greenhouse paint does exceptionally, exceptionally well. It needed four to five coats in the ceiling and three to four coats around because otherwise everything was burning to a crisp. We're moving into winter soon. The top might stay on because I still think it's going to be too bright, but the windows around are probably going to get peeled off. But other than that, the fans are doing quite well. The dehumidifier is still running. I've still had both of my windows cracked at night, still locked but cracked, uh, just to get some airflow and cool the temperatures down in here at nighttime, especially for something like the Dracula orchid, the Dracula solii orchid, the monkey face one, because that is higher elevations. So it does like a bit of a drop at night. Same thing goes with my, the Cuticuensis anthurium. So the Dracula solii blooms look like I might, might get some blooms this year if they don't abort at the last minute. They are growing quite nicely, basically. The Cuticuensis, both of those plants, I don't know how they're gonna go when it starts getting cooler and I have to close those doors. There'll still be a temperature drop at night, but I don't know. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed and I haven't just prattled on a bit too much and this wasn't a bit too, too manic. <laughs> But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Tell me which one of those plants you like the most, or if you've got some of your own stories that you want to share down in the comments below. If I have talked rubbish about any of these things, respectfully, let me know down below. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.